Oh, hi, honey. It's so nice to see you after such a long day. And you must be tired, too, of course. After such a long day of work. Oh, it's... It's nothing, dear. I just thought that that hug would be a tad longer. <laughs> How foolish of me. Dinner will be ready in two shakes of a lamb's tail. I know I should have had it done before you had gotten home. It's just that, well, after your work trip, I had so much extra laundry to do. And, of course, the extra sewing of your suits and the darning of your socks. And, of course, the elaborate dessert for the big company bash at the end of the week. I... It'll only be a few more minutes, darling. It's even your favorite. Lamb! Two shakes of a lamb's tail. You get it now, see? I thought it was... Right. Oh. Oh, of course. If, if you want to read your paper now, well, I... Well, I shouldn't stop you from your pleasures. There are cakes to be frosted and lambs to... Take out of the oven, as it were. <laughs> it's just that you, you're really the only one I get to talk to, you know? The closest thing to a real human face outside of the little people on the television and a real human voice on the radio. I mean, there are the neighborhood women. Oh, there are the neighborhood women, but they... They're just as busy as I am with their husbands and their kids and their responsibility to those husbands and to their kids. And sure, I might see them while getting the mail from the mailbox or the occasional neighborhood soiree, but there's no hope in knowing them the way I... the way I know... I don't think I even know myself well enough to make that kind of assertion. And I know they know it too. I can see it in their eyes, that I see me, because I know that they look in my eyes and they see themselves, because we are us, because we do not fade away as much as the collective as we do within the walls of our homes that hold these strange yellow tints. I, I spend so many hours within these coated yellow walls. And even as I watch the things crawl underneath the pasted paper and listen to them sing their whistling notes, I can't help but feel ever so undeniably lonely. Lonely in ways that... I, I'm... I'm sorry, dear. I'll... I'll try to leave you alone. It's just... Do you really think this is all life is? Standing here at the stove? Standing there ironing? Standing there washing dishes? Move throughout the house with the same free will as a doll would be before being laid down to sleep, only to do everything over the next day? Is there a point to this recursion? Or is this just a new circle of hell thrust upon the daughters of Lilith and Eve for the crimes of a choice made for? <sighs> the yellow wallpaper holds my shadow better than any of the other colors of wallpaper in the house. I can sit here and sew for hours at a time and only know how much time has really passed when the woman in the wall vanishes. It's a simple kind of companionship. A pathetic one, really, but there's... There's a comfort in pretending there's another woman here. Another woman who will sit by my side through the hours of the day, listening to my ramblings, my thoughts, and my dreams, or even just sitting in a comfortable silence as we share our labors with each other. The woman in the wallpaper... Well, well, does it not bother you? The idea that I become so lonely in this homestead that I begun to make friends with rejections of light? I even named her, you know. Evelyn. Her name is Evelyn. And are you not worried of your status? Your standing? The fact that the rumor of who I am and what I've done spreading farther and wider than you could ever imagine? 
The woman who looked to the walls to find a mirror? The shame could bring you to have a wife who could feel more at home in bedlam than within these walls? These hollowed yellow walls? Of course it wouldn't. It never would. As long as your suits are pressed and dinner's on the table before seven, and you can read your paper while sipping your milk, you don't give a damn about who I am and what I do. You don't care for me. And you care not for Evelyn either. Evelyn is not a good name for a bouncing baby girl, actually. Because Evelyn is not a baby. She's not a child. She's not some anguished cry and speaking into being just for the sake of a baby or two or three or seven. Loving a baby won't cure what I have. And you know it. You know it too. You just don't care. And why should you? The help isn't supposed to talk back after all. I'm damning myself with every word I say. <laughs> <laughs> At least Evelyn sings to me. Sings that I am home. Sings that I am here. Sings to me that she too is also here. And that I can be consumed by what really loves me. And can prove it without sowing the soil with a crop that can't be reaped. It's not really about the singing, dear. It's about living in a world where you're forced to realize that neither of us would be missed. Not you and I, just Jeannie. Joyful Jeannie, face at the yearbook committee and buried right after graduation, and Evelyn, her shadow, who's just as faceless and voiceless as I am now. As long as things are as they are now, I'll keep living this simple, open-closed dollhouse life, where St. Bernard sits at the top of your driveway, if only because you knew how much I loved dogs. So, somebody has to change things. We can quiet the torment of an anguished mind. We just have to do it together. It was never a good idea to bite at the hand that feeds you. Because it's my turn now. It's my turn. And at least, I'll be granted a fork. <laughs>